Okay, great. So to begin, can you each state your full name for me? Yes, my full name is Kathleen Mary Butler. Lee Campion, that was my maiden name, Campion. And my mother's maiden name was McCabe. Wow. Um, and where were you born? In Dublin. In Dublin, in which part of Dublin? In Dublin, south side of Dublin, south side. Main, a place called Kent's Fort, named after Eamon Kent. Ah, okay, and Joe? I have full name Joseph, I don't know whether you like the middle one, Alphonsus Butler. <laughs> <laughs> he used to call me when he was a child, Fancy. <laughs> and I was also born in Dublin. In which part a, of Dublin were you born? Well, we kind of north side, Rotunda Hospital. Okay. Yeah, and there again, my mother was County Mead, her maiden name was uh, Hale, and my father was Kilkenny. And what was, and was his name also Joseph? Oh, or? yeah. He was Joseph. I was called after him, yeah. Okay. That's what they tell me, anyway. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so you were named for your father. Were you named for anyone, Kathleen? Uh, my grandmother. My okay. grandmother, yeah. She came, she was from Carlo. So her name was Catherine. So naturally, I was Catherine, but called Kathleen. Yeah. And uh, do you have a nickname? Kay, which I do not like. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. Did you know your grandparents, Kathleen? Only my gra yes, on my father's side, my grandfather. He lived with us for a while. Actually, he passed away in our house. And on my mother's side, I knew my grandmother. But the, my grandfather, my mother's side, he had passed away before I was born. And my grandmother on my father's side had passed away also. So I'm sorry I didn't know them, really. But uh, my grandfather was a wonderful person. My father's father, he lived with us and, as I say, passed away there. So then, of course, when I, he was gone before I left for this country to, you know, to pass down. Joe, how about you? Did you know your grandparents? Just one. Just one? Yeah, my uh, mother's father. He was an uh, old castle maid. Um, I lived with him for years when I was young, recovering from an illness in Dublin. So uh, the doctor at the time recommended if we go down for country air, we'd uh, grow up nice and healthy. So I had a great time down there. And he lived to be 96 wow. and rode a bicycle up to two weeks before he died. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <true. Good laughs> well, yeah, great genes. I hope I got some of them. <laughs> 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 okay. Now, um, what was, what was Dublin like in your childhood? And if I could get separate memories, because since you come from separate parts of the city. Okay. Wonderful city. Wonderful, Wonderful city. city. Mm -hmm. I always say the best city to grow up in. When we were young, going around, we had good times. Could walk the streets in comfort, you no know, looking over your shoulder. Went to dances, parties. It was, it was a great city. I know from my side of town, from the south side, and Joe, of course, he was involved with sports, so he's a different scene. We always said on the north side, we were the better side. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like uh, what she said, it was a great city. Uh, it was, like looking back what goes on today, mm. things were so innocent and the people at the time that they looked out for one another, neighbours, children and all that. And like she said, you could go any time of the day or night in Dublin and not have to worry about fear, uh, crime or anything like that. But Unfortunately, it has changed now. Mm. Mm. Dublin in the rare old, rare old, old times. Rare old times. Exactly. Yeah, that's, <coughs> that's really true. Really mm. true. And part of it, the Liberties, is not too far from where I came from. The song is more or less around the Liberties. Mm. So it was all that area, area near Guinness and what have you in that that used to pass by every day. It was great memories, great memories of Dublin, really. Um, now with Dublin in the rare old times, do you know some of the street rhymes and things that the children would say? say yeah, oh yeah, when we used to play Relivio and kick the can and swing on a lamppost, you know, that was like a, what we played actually, you know. There was no, of course, video games like they have today or anything like that. And like that, you know, you make your own fun really. You really did, it was simple, it was simple, but it was good, it was good. Yeah. How about you, Joe? What did you well, do? Well, basically the same. We, we, well, like the young children, we played all the little games around, like what they call kick the can and uh, leave you and all that. We had no videos then. We were lucky to have a radio. <laughs> but then with the Christian brothers going to school, 
they instill the <coughs> a lot of the Irish into us and the, the love of the Irish sports. Mm-hmm. But there's also played a lot of that uh, up to the uh, started breaking too many bones and <laughs> had to quit. But uh, really had a great time with them. So yeah. is that where you started the sports at the Christian mm, Brothers? Oh, the Christian Brothers, yeah, in, in Marino. Mm-mm. And which sports did you play? I played both of them, fo- football and hurling. Yeah. Excellent. And went on to play with Dublin and Minor and in senior in the, up to about the early 50s. And, uh, you know, like I said, breaking too many bones. So I was the mainstay at home at the time, so <laughs> I just quit them because I couldn't stay on. And which sport did you prefer? Um, in my own way, I think it was better football than it was a hurling. But like, we really liked the two of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. Kathleen, did you play any sports? Camogie. Camogie, Camogie, yeah, yeah. <coughs> not, not, not for very long, you know. We, it was more like for fun, really, but not like Joe into championships or anything like that. We used to go to the Phoenix Park. So you heard the Phoenix Park, and we'd play Camogie up there on a team called Naviva. That's where I played, but maybe for just a couple of years. That was it. And that's a club level team. Club, yeah, club. It was a club, Naviva. Yeah, club. Uh, I didn't break any bones, unfortunately. <laughs> it's not that rough. <laughs> <laughs> now, switching back to your family, since you lived in Dublin on other, you know, opposite sides of the city, uh, what did your parents do? And again, I'll start with Kathleen. Uh, my father worked for CIE. CIE, that's Corus Umpereren at the time. He was on, he used to do the trains from Dublin to Thurlis and back and forth like that. And then my grandfather was in the corporation, which is Dublin, the city of Dublin. And of course, my mom didn't work, naturally. No, no mother's work then at that time, no. And then Joe's father was... Well, my father, he was, uh, had his own little business, uh, painting and decorating. Around Dublin, we did the local churches and schools and different things. And then after he died, I took over. So uh, things were good for a while, but then all of, a, all of a sudden the economy went real bad in Ireland in the 50s. So we used to spend more time looking to get what we wor- uh, earned, to get paid, than if we were working with those uh, things just collapsed and uh, we came, uh, emigrated out here, myself and a few other friends. And so which year did you emigrate? 57. 57. So you emigrated together? No, no, no. He came first. No. Actually, we were going together for two, two, three, three years, three years in Ireland. And there was, we couldn't see any future there at that time. As Joe said, the economy was bad. So we decided his brother was here in this country, his aunt and his uncle. So we got in touch with them <coughs> and they said, yes, they would sponsor us. So Joe came in March of 57, I came in July 57, and we got married in November 57. Here? Here in this country, yes. And yeah. where did you marry? In St. Mary's in Stamford. St. Mary's in Stamford, yeah. Did you have family at your wedding? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Well, Joe's well, well, brother. Well, my and brother was here, but they, and her, some of her cousins from New York. Cousins and that, and that but yeah. my mother and but father couldn't we, come. We know him direct from Ireland. Nobody direct from Ireland. Mm-hmm. And um, we went to Miami on our honeymoon, which was a big, big deal at that time. <laughs> Never thought we'd see there, but we did. And of course, since then, we've been back quite often to see you. As long as my parents were alive, we went back with the children and that. I'd like to go back, really do. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did you meet in Dublin? Well, it was more or less like at the time, it was dances, and we kind of, I knew. I was a girlfriend of one of these girls that knew somebody that Joe knew. So we kind of got together. We were more or less introduced at a dance, we'll say. That was the, in Cleary's in Dublin, a famous ballroom in Dublin. So that's how we started going out together. Yeah. Ballroom or romance. Or romance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a common way of meeting in Ireland at that time, going to the dances and what have you, uh, or then the movie houses, which... Uh, a lot of that has changed now too with the with the advance of the singing pubs and other stuff that's going on in Ireland now. So the the ballroom is kind of a dead thing now. Mm. It's past. And which night or nights of the week would you go to the ballroom? Oh. Every night. Every <laughs> we night. danced so, every so, night. Some weeks it could be every night. With, with, yeah. with clubs to be running, the dance here and the dance there. So we'd all support one another. They say so. I won't say every night, but it could be three or four times a week. A week. 
They're dancers and then we for the moon. Play football and hurling on Sundays. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And were the football and hurling clubs the ones that were sponsoring the dancers? Mm -hmm. Well, not them all, but some of them they would have dancers going, and that was a uh, way of meeting. There was one big thing now, like St. Vincent's, that he'd play for. We'd have what they call a dress dance, which you got your tuxedo, the men with the tuxedo, and the ladies with the long dresses. And that would be once a year, right? And yeah, well, you'd have that, that once a year. Yeah, once and a year. Well, and a lot of the other clubs had the same. So, like I say, we supported one another at the time and what way we went. That was so a big night out. That was really a big night. Yeah, it was mostly held in a hotel or that, you know. So we'd all get together and go to that. Yeah, they were enjoyable. They really were. Yeah. <laughs> now, switching back a little bit to your the home of your birth, can you tell me what it was like to look out your front door and what would you see? Well, now, where I lived, we were kind of up on a height, you know, when they go up a, what we used to call a driveway, and we lived on the front. So the buses went by. The main bus from Dublin City out to a place called Inchicore, which was past Kilmainham and that. So we'd look out there, see that, and then across the way, I think there was um, a laundry, and then up the way there was, which has since now made into apartments, and that was a distillery. So we were like on the main main road, kind of on the main drag. Yeah. You could see, we went to, you could see the old man's Oh, yeah, I could see then. Looking over to the Phoenix Park, you could see what we called the old man's clock. It was a retirement home for the British soldiers. Oh. At my time, no, it's um, yeah, it's a media centre and what have you. It's I all changed. I looked into something. I think, but yeah. yeah, so that's basically what you what you see. Of course, we had trees around and what have you and all that down in the but that. But we were nice up on a height and could look down and it was, of course, it was black houses, you know, so we, we were kind of safer to play out in front in the, the driveway or the path, as we used to call it, the path, yeah. And you've mentioned the Kilmainham Jail. Why is that famous? That's famous. Well, that's where a lot of them were executed from 1916. In fact, James Connolly was one of the, the ones. Oh, that's Pierce and his brother. Project Pierce and his brother. And a lot of history mm -hmm. around where I came from, really. That's why Kent's mm -hmm. Fort is named after Raymond Kent. Mm -hmm. That was a part. He was one of the designers of 1916. And then just two doors up from where I lived was, well, he, maybe he's not that well known, Lee Mellow's mother. He was hanged down in uh, Mayo, wasn't it? I think I'm Mayo. Not quite sure. And his mother lived very old, and we used to go and visit her all the time. She was one of the ones she used to tell us as children stories um, that uh, made the flag like Betsy Ross that went over the GPO in 1916. And maybe we'd be playing out on the footpath, and you'd see Devalera come up for to see her. Or Cosgrove, yeah, many times. But we paid no attention to that. We were just kids at the time, you know, paid no attention. But she was a wonderful old lady, she really was. My father used to go into her and they'd, he'd give her books and she'd give him books and what have you. Very historic, really, yeah. And you mentioned the Liberties as well. The Liberties was down further. That was, yeah, that was, um, you say, Kilmainham then. We had Mount Brown where I lived, Kensport, and then the Liberties were down Thomas Street. Down, and where the um, Robert Emmett, that's around where he was hanged down there in Thomas Street, Meat Street. That's all part of the Liberties. That was a historic area too. Very yeah. Historic. Oh well, Dublin is a historical <laughs> city. Sure. Yeah. Real old. Yeah. yeah. And how about you, Joe? When you look out your front door, what did you well, see? What we saw, we lived in a like kind of a little scheme, a corporation scheme in Dublin there, Dunny Kearney. Uh -huh. And we looked at her front door. We saw the same type of house on the other side of the street. Mm. So uh, that's basically what you saw. And uh, well, growing up, there was very, very little uh, motor car at the time. So anything that was delivered or coming around the bread. It was all done by horse, horse and cart, and even the fishmongers of a Friday, that time we had to eat fish. Mm -hmm. They'd come in from Holt, which was a big fishing area out uh, near us, and they'd come in with a hand cart and sell the, the fish around the houses to the different people. And, uh, and then just back a, a little way from that then, there was uh, Parnell Park, which is uh, one of the Gaelic grounds, the football grounds. And there was good open spaces all around us where we could play. So we played all the way around to what we liked. <coughs> and now when you would do your shopping, your, like your food shopping, did you get it from the carts only or did you go to the market? Oh, oh no, that would be just the fish. No, my mother, the, 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 the ritual was, a lot of the women, they go down to Mass, they say, more. they go to Mass, say, at 10 o'clock, 
then the, was a, the grocery store was close by, so they'd buy their groceries there, whatever they needed, for the day that we had, because there was no refrigerators at that, at that time. So they just buy more or less what they needed for the day, and then the same thing, back to Mass the following morning, and do the groceries, and uh, some of the stores, uh, the bigger shops had maybe what they called a messenger boy. He'd come around on a bicycle with a basket in front, and he'd take your orders at the door. And then he'd go back, they'd have it uh, cut, finished, or packaged, and then brought down to your home, and uh, pay, pay them as they came. So that, that was the si simple form of life when I was there. Yeah. Sounds good. Mm -mm. It was a way for the women to meet too, you know, they'd have a chat on the way. And the, it was basically all the same. All, that's what all the, the mothers did. Nobody, of course, worked the, at that time. I was a woman working, <laughs> yeah. or, or a mother at least, anyway. <laughs> go shop and have a chat and come home, ha get your dinner in the middle of the day at that time. You know, dinner in the evening and middle of the day. If you worked, you had to come home for your dinner or school and that, go back again and then come home in the evening for tea. So the men and the children would come home and have their main meal. Yeah, dinner. yeah, if they could, well, if well, they were well, anywhere uh, Most of the men, well, a lot of them, they cycle out from Dublin or different where they work on the bicycle. And the, the main dinner was in the middle of the day, one o'clock mm -hmm. around that time. And then uh, they would have what we call tea in the evening time. Mm -hmm. And what would tea consist of? Oh, probably maybe ham sandwich or salad or something Chip like that, you know. Could be have a light fry or light something. Light fry, like. something like that, yeah. 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 A light fry. Light fry, and maybe well, a sausage and sausage and a bacon or an mm. eggs or something or a little liver or something something that's mm. like yeah. Well, we didn't go hungry. <laughs> it wasn't the fanciest, but we were all right. <laughs> okay. Did you have any favorite foods as a child? I know his favorite food would be. Right? We didn't have much choice. We just had yeah, to eat what was put in front of yeah. us. So and uh, unfortunately, come to a dinner sometimes. Well. They tell you, well, you leave it when it's cold. If you do it in the, so you didn't have the choices that the children have today go on. So um, I, I don't know if we could say any favourite food. We just liked what we got. It was that, that simple. Yeah. In the long run, then growing up, I really got to like it. I called it my favourite food. Uh, Some say it wasn't the best for me. Uh, good fish and chip in Dublin. They were the... Really, <laughs> the best you get in any part of the world. Is <laughs> Dublin fish and chip was the best. <clears throat> is that what you were thinking of? Mark? Yeah, yeah, that's what I, yeah. Mm -mm. To this day, it's still the fish and chip whenever he goes back, if you can get them now, but there are not too many of them now in Dublin. No. <gasps> can yeah. you get them here in this country? Yeah, yeah. some well, place, some place uh, Well, you see, there at that time, it was all fresh fish come in. Now it's the packaged fish, so it's not the same oh, anymore. Now. But it was really good. Mm -mm. And were they fish fresh from the Liffey? Or oh, no, well, no, no. Well, not so no, much no, from the Liffey. No, but no. but it's Dublin, uh, there's a coast all around it there. That, well, the, so the, the fishing boats, like I say, Holt is one of the famous fishing villages in Ireland. And there'd be boats to be coming in every day and the fresh catch. And uh, at that time, uh, well, good for, uh, Fridays after you eat, eat fish, if you were out in Holt of a Friday evening, for the price of a pack of cigarettes, which at that time was very little money, give to the boat people, they give you enough fish to feed about 10 or 20 families. <laughs> so you brought it back in. You supplied the whole neighborhood <laughs> with the fish. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, if you had any way of carrying it in. Uh, and then most of the fish and chip shops were owned by Italians. They were good. And the ice cream parlors, which was fantastic in Dublin, the Palm Grove and Cofolas, a lot of those. So the, the fish and chips were really good. <laughs> And the ice cream parlors too. They were my favourites for me oh, the as ice a cream kid. You get an ice cream that big. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sixpence. Mm -mm. Sixpence. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. That'd be less than a dime now today. Mm -mm. <laughs> we used to have Manhattan Glory was one that was a famous that was a big one with fruit <coughs> and that and a Manhattan Glory. That was most of the kids' favourites. Yeah. Now does Dublin kind of centre around the Liffey or it divides it, yeah. The yeah. Liffey, yeah. Dublin, from when we were there, oh, oh, it's, it's maybe three, four times as big. There, all the land that was around Dublin, and that, it's all built on. So, like, if I go home now, sometimes go into the newer parts, I can get lost. I won't know where I am. Yeah. But the old, old parts of Dublin, I still know pretty good. But uh, the Liffey, do, yeah, divide the north and south. And mm -hmm. what kind of river is it? 
Oh, it's a, one, of the, one of the bigger rivers in, the, in Ireland. In Ireland, yeah. yeah it's it's the river that Guinness made famous. Where he uh, make the making the, Guinness. Making Guinness. He said that no water is good as the Guinness water for the for the Guinness. Yeah. Is it beautiful? Is it pretty? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yes, well, yeah. well, like uh, any river running through a city, it doesn't it's just walled in. But you go back, back out the countryside, out to places called uh, Leek Slip, where the salmon they have the salmon leaps, and then up the Wicklow Mountain, where, where the river rises. We used to go out there with the Christian brothers at school time, in the school, and a place called uh, Sugarloaf, and the traces down, to come down the mountain where the source of the river Liffey was, right down then. And that in Torden then they have a place called uh, Pula Fuca. It's just outside of Dublin, which is the water supply, the reservoirs and that for Dublin, which is all gathered there. And then the river comes into a place called Island Bridge, where the police have a big place there and they row on the river for their own. And then it comes down the next big one to be Guinness and they, they, they suck the water out of the air for to, to make the Guinness. To this day. Mm. The, till, till this day, I believe, yeah. Wow. Mm -mm. Can you speak Irish? Not too well. I used we used to. We had to. That's we learned everything through the medium of Gaelic when we were going to school. History, geography, math, the whole lot. It was compulsory because it was true Devilleers time. But then when you left school it was a dead language because our parents couldn't speak it. I used to we used to have contests, they say that's talk, you know, you'd have to stand around, do everything in Gaelic. But today, few words I do. Few few but I can't just can't make a conversation now. Okay. I'm the same. Mm. I've gone to school to speak, speak, speak fluently. Speak fluently, yeah. But then, like she said, I'm home uh, uh, from work, uh, from school, doing our homework. Our parents been raised under British rule at the time. They didn't know a word of Irish, so we were trying to do homework. They didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I didn't know what they were talking <laughs> about. So it was all mixed up. <laughs> but whoever, the only thing I say about the Irish at that time, Dev was trying to provide the language. Well, mm -hmm. after Ireland being, getting its independence, that I think its own way neglected or commanded the English language growing up. It did, I so, think that And unfortunately, true. unless you went into the civil service in the government in Ireland, or a teacher, or maybe a guard, that'd be a policeman, you really no use, no, there was no need for the Irish language. But to qualify in the laws, you had to have a knowledge of it. But uh, that's... Uh, I, I think, I, but the Christian brothers then, on the other hand, they insisted that everything you did, even out playing in the, in the school grounds, you had to speak English or uh, Irish. Irish. If you spoke English, you got extra homework mm. to do that evening, that little punishment. Mm. <coughs> yeah, it was a shame that we really, you know, at the time that we were going to school, like as Joe says, for the corporation exam, which I did, and for teacher preparatory, had to do everything through Gaelic. And sometimes now I find myself, you know, writing the Irish or 